And joining us now, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Mr. Secretary, thanks for being with us this morning. So you rejoined those negotiations yesterday with a bipartisan group of senators trying to find a solution to what's happening, which I think you would agree is a crisis at the border right now. Uh, Senator Murphy, Democrat of Connecticut, came out and said the negotiations were, quote, very difficult, not projecting a ton of confidence about the progress there. How would you characterize the conversations? Where is somewhere that you could agree, all of you, on a bipartisan basis to fix this problem? So thanks so much for, uh, for having me this morning. You know, the one thing in immigration that everybody agrees upon is the fact that we've been dealing with a broken immigration system for decades. And what the bipartisan group of senators is now doing is attempting to finally fix a significant part of that broken immigration system. And I have been privileged to provide technical advice to them. And I am actually optimistic. These are earnest, hardworking efforts to tackle a very complicated problem. We've been making progress each and every day. And despite how difficult it is, that progress is ongoing. And I am hopeful that an immigration fix will occur. And I should say, in addition, that our administration under President Biden's leadership has fought for that long needed fix since day one, when President Biden, on the very first day of his administration, submitted a comprehensive immigration reform bill to Congress. Most recently, we have sought much needed funding uh, for our efforts to address the situation at the border. More Border Patrol agents, more asylum officers, more immigration judges, more investment in technology to battle the scourge of fentanyl. We are focused on fixing the challenge, on fixing the problem. We are focused on solutions. As you know, Mr. Secretary, Border Patrol in the month of December processed more migrants entering the United States illegally than any month in the history of that agency. Why is that happening? What, how do you explain it? So we are seeing the greatest number of displaced people, not only at our southern border, not only in the Western Hemisphere, but across the globe. You know, I am involved in bilateral and multilateral meetings with my counterparts from foreign countries in Europe, uh, in Asia, in the Indo-Pacific, all over the world. And migration, the challenge of displaced people, is a subject that comes up in every single conversation. We have the effects of climate change, poverty, increasing level of authoritarianism, the very many challenges that are at the root cause of the displacement of people around the world. So, Mr. Secretary, certainly a given that something needs to be done at the border. But in the interim, before something is, before something goes into effect, <clears throat> we're hearing from many big city mayors, governors, lots of them Democrats, asking Washington to do more. Uh, Eric Adams, the mayor of New York City, repeatedly has said that in recent days. So what more is Washington going to do, if anything, to answer their calls for help? So um, we have taken action on the border and we've taken action with respect to the challenges that cities across the country are facing. Let me let me identify one fundamental problem here, and that is the fact that we have one governor in the state of Texas who is refusing to cooperate with other, other governors and other local officials and coordinate efforts to address a challenge that our country which this country should stand united to address that our country is facing. And it's a remarkable failure of governance to refuse to cooperate with one's fellow local and state officials. But we have dispatched teams to Chicago, Denver, uh, New York, uh, to name just three, to assist them in managing the challenge to assist them in ensuring that people who are eligible for work receive their work authorization as swiftly as possible, and we're continuing to collaborate with them. We've also successfully sought some funding from Congress to assist the cities, and in our supplemental budget request, we've requested additional funding for that purpose, and we do hope that Congress passes that critically needed funding measure. 
Mr. Secretary, the thousands of human beings who arrive at the border of the United States, they don't get there by Uber. They come through Mexico, all of them. Why can't Mexico do more to be of assistance? So Mexico is doing uh, a great uh, deal. Uh, we were uh, there in Mexico City meeting with President López Obrador last week, Secretary Blinken, and I joined by the President's Homeland Security Advisor, Liz Sherwood Randall. Uh, they have a migration challenge themselves, as does Colombia, as does Ecuador, as does Costa Rica, as does Panama, as does Guatemala. This is a regional problem that is challenging our entire hemisphere and, as I referenced earlier, th so many countries around the world. But we spoke with Mexico last week about what we think they can do to assist us in enforcing uh, their borders so that we do not see the level of migration, irregular migration, at our border. And, in fact, we've started to see the results of their increased cooperation and our increased collaboration on the enforcement measures. Mr. Secretary, we learned just a couple of days ago that there is a backlog of some three million cases of asylum seekers who are allowed to come into the United States, remain in the United States while they wait for their trial, which in most cases will be years from now, just not enough judges to process that. What do you do about that, number one? And number two, is it a good idea to let the asylum seekers be in the United States while they wait a trial, or should they remain where they are? So that backlog is a powerful example of how broken our immigration system is and for how long it has been broken. Because that backlog existed when I was in the Department of Homeland Security in 2009. It preceded me then, and it precedes me now in my tenure as the Secretary of Homeland Security. That three million case backlog has been building for years and years and years. It got much, much worse when U.S. Citizenship and Immigration System uh, 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 Services, the agency within the Department of Homeland Security that administers our legal immigration system, was financially gutted during the prior administration, when it did not receive the fee funds uh, that Congress statutorily um, um, called upon it to do. And what we have done is we have sought additional asylum officers. We are going to be right-sizing that immigration agency through our regulatory authorities. But fundamentally, fundamentally, Congress must fix the broken immigration system. And that case backlog is a powerful example of why that is so. I know you have to run, Mr. Secretary. Quickly before you do, we're just getting news this morning from Punchbowl News that the House Homeland Security Committee is formally moving ahead with impeachment proceedings against you with the first hearing to be held a week from today. What's your reaction? You know, uh, you mentioned um, earlier in our conversation uh, that I uh, joined the bipartisan group of senators to work on a legislative solution to a broken immigration system. Uh, I was uh, on the Hill yesterday to provide technical advice in those ongoing negotiations. Before I headed to the Hill, I was in the office working on solutions. After my visit to the Hill, I was back in my office working on solutions. That's what we do in the Department of Homeland Security. That's what this administration is focused on, solutions to problems. But you will cooperate with the hearings, the investigation here? I most certainly will. And I'm going to continue to do my work as well. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, thank you for your time this morning. We appreciate it. Thank uh, you.